Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson. The NFL draft is in the books. We're going to talk a lot about it. We'll talk about other draft classes. We'll talk about the AFC North. We'll talk about all kinds of good stuff. But today is just going to be a real basic overview of what the Steelers did over the weekend. And I thought it was great. I really did. I thought that they were very patient, but very well prepared, had a great plan, didn't overreact to what happened around them, had a very good understanding of the NFL landscape, what teams need centers, what teams don't, for example, when to pounce, when not to. And again, patience really was the the theme here, as were a couple other things. But I think you know my thoughts on the players by now, but I'll run through them super quick. Um, Troy Fatanu, offensive tackle, offensive tackle, Washington. Love the player. Love him. I mean, he was my eighth overall player, maybe ninth, uh, on my Steelers big board that included Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison and those guys. So the guys that were conceivable to get, he was like my second favorite guy behind J.C. Latham and just ahead of Fawaga. A run to the podium player. So much fun. So energetic unbelievable athleticism, great attitude. Everyone that talked to him here was very impressed when, with his you know, first trip to Pittsburgh well, for, as a Steeler. He, I don't know if he'll be the right tackle or the left tackle. I really don't care. That stuff will sort itself out sooner than later. Zach Frazier, I think, will be the starting center probably from day one and a good one. Not quite as good an athlete as some give him credit for in terms of change of direction, speed, but plays with great leverage, which is an athleticism trait. Bent Knees bent, really good understanding of the game, wrestler's mentality, looks like a starter from day one that should succeed and maybe go past that you know little bar that I set there. Roman Wilson fits in really well, blocks, tough, over the middle, throws his body around, fights for the ball in traffic. Pure slot, more or less, but a speed slot, goes deep, isn't tremendous after the catch. The biggest thing he needs to work on is overcoming man coverage. So if you, you see a lot of his catches are manufactured touches to some degree. I mean, not that he can't win one-on-one. He destroyed people one-on-one at the Senior Bowl. But you'll see him go in motion and then break it upfield. I mean, like, they didn't just put him on the line of scrimmage and let the dudes push him around and get their hands on him. So, keep that in mind. But I like him a lot at this, this stage of the game in the third round. Peyton Wilson from the th- in the third rounder as well. Really, really fast. All over the field. Sees things very quickly. Extreme understanding of what the offense is trying to do and what his defense is as a whole. Short arms, and that'll show up like when a, a guard gets to him on the second level. They get their big mitts on him before he does them. Sort of a slender lower body. I was a little shocked, you know, what he looked like walking around the facility a little bit, but really tall. Um, injury history is the only reason he ex- is there at 98 in any way, shape, or form. And I keep going down this road. I mean, I think he's going to be maybe a starter. You know what I mean? Like right off the bat, you don't draft him with next year in mind, the year after in mind, because he may not be in this league long. So I told you guys a lot going into the draft that if the Steelers didn't get a top three center, my quote consolation prize or next best was Mason McCormick, who they listed as a guard. He was a guard his whole time at South Dakota State, but he was also their backup center. Many people in the know think he's an easy transition to center. I would imagine he starts his career here at guard. But by second week of training camp, is he going to be snapping the football just to cross train him a little bit? And, you know, would he be the, maybe the center on in fourth quarters during the preseason, you know, with, you know, with the, uh, they, they signed a quarterback who I should have his name in front of me, but I I have not given the undrafted free agents a lot of time yet. I will look into them in the next 24 hours, but they drafted a very athletic quarterback or not drafted, but they gave him big money by their standards. Didn't plan on having this conversation, but he's a very athletic undrafted free agent quarterback. And I can envision him taking snaps from McCormick in the fourth quarter of preseason games. See what I'm saying? You know, like, so McCormick, I think could do some of that as we go, but he's a guard for now. Very athletic, team captain type, durable, tough, South Dakota State dude. I mean, there's a lot to like there. My hunch is 
he him and the last two picks really Peyton Wilson and McCormick I bet they just stood out on their draft board of we got a really high grade on this guy and he stands out amongst all the others maybe it's not our biggest need at this time but we're still pulling the trigger on those picks these next two are probably the round six guys are probably for another day as you would expect although Logan Lee might help on special teams. I mean, he blocks a lot of field goals. He actually bats down a lot of passes at 6'5", about 280, long, but he's lean, and he moves well. I mean, even on this new kickoff rule, though, I could see him getting involved. Uh, him and Loudermilk, I'm sure, will be fighting for snaps, attention, roster space, etc. But I look at Lee as somebody that needs 10 pounds of muscle, power, man strength, thickness, bulk, etc., before he really can do what they want him to do. Um, so that's fine. I mean, uh, there's, I, I'm not comparing him to Aaron Smith, but when Aaron Smith came out of, what, Northern Colorado, he was 265, you know? He was 295 before he knew it and a different player. So maybe that's sort of the mold for the Logan Lee. Ryan Watts was the first pick they made that I didn't know who he was, but now I get it. I mean, Highly recruited, goes to Ohio State for two years. Then he transfers to Texas. I mean, big time programs. He's six two, almost two hundred and ten pounds. And he looks like an underwear model. I mean, he is long and chiseled, body beautiful. Didn't run phenomenally, but his jumps are outstanding. You could see why he's highly recruited. Now, this is a terrible example, and I hate comparisons. You know, who's he remind you of? Oh, Mel Blunt, Jack Ham. You know, great players. But I wonder if how they looked at Cooper DeGene, who I think is a first-round pick, and this guy is a six-round pick, so please keep that in perspective, they look at Watts. Like, maybe he's not quite fluid enough to be an outside corner, but our corners are 6'2 and better, and I'm not sure Trice is fluid enough to be an outside corner in all systems. Maybe he's a safety. That's what I'm talking about, the, the, the DeGene profile. It's the Michelob Ultra Ultra version of that, though, of course. Or, you know, maybe he's a safety, big safety. Maybe that's best for him. Come downhill, read from distance. Maybe he's a big slot. You know, then maybe he's the guy that lines up against big tight ends out of the slot. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I mean, at a minimum, I would think he's going to be very valuable on special teams in a James Pierre type fashion. You know what I mean? And they are missing some of those core guys. So, uh, you know, uh, I love the pick there. I mean, for what you paid for him. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs. With up the minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite teams' path to the playoffs. With in game live betting, contests, and all the best player props, experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile device. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's capital B L E A V, for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. So we talked about each player. We've done that before. Talked about them before the draft. There was a lot of guys in this class that I thought would have been good stealers that we've talked about weeks leading up, and that can, intended to be true. Good stuff. A couple things, though, is after digging into this, you probably don't all know what RAS is. R-A-S. That's Relative Athletic Score. Now that just that means that Xavier Worthy one running a four two one at one hundred and sixty pounds might not be more impressive than a two hundred and eighty pound guy running a four six. You know what I mean? So it's relative, relative athletic score based on height and especially weight. So of all the draft classes, you can go go search for RAS and you can. There's a site there you can find any player's RAS score. And some of them you got to take with a little bit of grain of salt because some worked out the combine, some worked their pro day on a faster track. But all in all, you get in the ballpark. And the Steelers had the second best draft in terms of relative athletic score. If you check my Twitter timeline, it says they have the best, but there's this little fine print there that if you look at the top seven picks, they were the most athletic. 
But if you look at the whole draft as a whole, I found this out after, uh, after afterwards, the commanders have the most athletic. They made a lot more picks. So I guess their average players, Raz, was better than the Steelers. But they were neck and neck for top seven picks. Needless to say, fine print aside, this is a super athletic class. I mean, and clearly that was stressed. The other thing I thought was stressed in this class was, boy, there's a lot of experience. I mean, a lot of snaps played. I mean, even at South Dakota State, but the NC State dude, the Washington guy, WVU dude, the Michigan guy. I mean, like all these guys played a lot of snaps in college. I mean, they're not... Even Broderick Jones, you know, one-year starter, a lot of rawness. And I'm not saying they're finished products either. I, th- I still think their best football collectively is ahead of them. But that had to be a theme, you know, that we want guys that have played a lot of football. We're not just here, you know, waiting for tomorrow. I mean, this has come from the top, from ownership. I'm getting impatient. I want to win now. Well, we got athletes that have played a lot of football. That's a pretty good combination, right? And it brings me to the last thing is – Who do I expect to play early? In one way, shape, or form, both offensive linemen are going to be starters to me on opening day. I have no doubt about that. Frazier's going to be the starting center. Fatanu's going to be one of the two tackles. Maybe, maybe Broderick Jones starts out at right tackle, and there's a, quote, competition at left tackle between Fatanu and Moore, but she'll win. But whatever. I think those guys are starting offensive linemen now and forever hold your peace. And I understand the Steelers did not throw their rookies early into the mix. I'm taking that into account. I was there as well. And I remember these things. Roman Wilson to me is very likely to be the number three receiver of the starting slot, but that's not a slam dunk. I mean, Quez Watkins, Van Jefferson's very slot capable and Calvin Austin. So I think he goes past that trio quickly, but Who knows? I mean, rookies don't all play as starters right away. Peyton Wilson, at a minimum, when they have two linebackers on the field, nickel, I think he will be the guy next to Queen, especially early on if Holcomb's not ready. But maybe in the 3-4, it's Roberts next to Queen, and Wilson has to fight in his way in, and in the meantime is a dominant player on special teams. But I keep thinking that Wilson, as good as he was in college, is going to play more snaps than many people realize. And maybe it's week 10 that he takes over as a full-time starter or whatever. Maybe it's just nickel packages. Maybe it's dime. I don't know. But I do think this not linebacker dynamic is really interesting. I don't know what to think about Holcomb. I think when you make this pick in the third round, it's an obvious red flag with Holcomb for sure. Um, And we might talk about that tomorrow of players that this draft wasn't kind to that might not be around for long, or maybe you could trade or get some cap space. I mean, that's the way this league works. So I'm not going to say Wilson's a starter, but it wouldn't shock me. I don't think McCormick's going to be a starter, but he could be a year from now. And Logan Lee and Watts, no. I mean, we'll see what happens with them, of course. So again, quick recap of the final recap of the class as a whole. Start getting to more specific projects. I got some things lined up to talk to you guys about. But this is going to start to be sort of the slow period. Uh, I do recognize that there's a lot of, on the rumor mill, about Steelers could make a big move. I have thought that for weeks at the receiver position, to be very honest with you. And hope it happens. All right. Take care, everyone. 